everybody and welcome to this afternoon's lesson we are focusing on advanced and proficiency vocabulary from a newspaper article every day at 1 p.m that's the plan this week next week we will see i might change the topic but at the moment at 1 p.m we're focusing on vocabulary from a newspaper and magazine today the magazine is forbes and it's a financial or economic magazine and today we're looking at romania as you can see everything is decorated with romanian colors specifically an article about traveling to bucharest and i'm very interested because i've never been to bucharest i've never been to romania and this article might be interesting for this reason so i hope that you will enjoy and again we will just read the text to practice pronunciation and to give you an idea about the story and i will try to help you with vocabulary and expressions from the text so really it's for you to enjoy and let's begin if you have a question please leave your question in the facebook chat if you have a comment or anything to say please leave your message and say hello okay fantastic let's begin here is the magazine and it was a bit difficult to um, organize the space and the location of this article because of the size of the page, but we can begin. So why Bucharest, Romania, belongs on your travel wish list now? For me, oh, I've disappeared. Where have I gone? For me, the key verb here is to belong. It's an interesting verb. We don't really learn it a lot so if you're learning english i'm not sure if you're very familiar with this verb but it's very important to belong it's like possession this book belongs to me this table belongs to me it's for possession and it's very important so also um wish list is very key as well so it's difficult for me to highlight because the screen will jump so i'm just going to use my arrow to focus on the key vocabulary so wish list is very important obviously it's a list of things that you would like to do or like to have and um clearly um a wish list is something that you things you want to have okay of course in english we have a bucket list maybe you are familiar with a bucket list the bucket list is the list of things that you want to do before you die so there's a wish list and a bucket list as well so that's a very very well known expression let's begin so Anne Abel is the journalist and it's seven minutes to read so here's a picture of Bucharest at night and you can see here the uh, I'm not going to press the button but that's half the picture of Bucharest at night okay so I like places that are not obvious I like cities with complicated histories with architecture that is not always lovely and with a palpable sense of transformation and change. I especially like cities with a civic life that does not revolve around me as a tourist. And so I figured I would like Bucharest. So this is the introduction. This expression I figured is very important. This means I realized, I discovered, I concluded, I thought. So figured is very conversational here and it means I thought, I concluded, I, I believed, I realized. So you need to be a little bit careful using that, but it's very important as well. Palpable sense is very good vocabulary. This means a very, you can almost taste it, you can feel it, you can touch it. It's a palpable, palpable sense of transformation. So it's very clear and you can see it clearly. So really good. Architecture has the ch sound like a k architecture so the ch sound is irregular sometimes in english and in this case it sounds like a k okay let's begin if you have a question during this article please ask a question in relation to the vocabulary and i can hopefully answer any questions that you have let's continue a century ago the capital of romania was known as paris of the east for its French style Art Nouveau and Art Deco architecture and vibrant cultural life. Alas, the 20th century was not kind to Romania. Between World War II, 
one of the most brutal communist dictatorships in Europe and an earthquake in 1977, the city lost much of that grandeur. Okay, so vocabulary from this paragraph. Um, nothing really vibrant. It's just very good, very colourful, very lively. First thing, when you're writing English at a very fluent level and very proficiently, sometimes it's good to be clear and to be very direct. And this article so far as an introduction is very clear and <clears throat> it's not complicated. And sometimes that's the secret. Some people try to complicate their English, but sometimes it's better to be very clear and maybe add one or two very, very special words in your paragraph. For example, alas is difficult and alas means finally. It's more formal and it really means in the end, finally. So really the significance here is however, finally, the 20th century was not kind, was not generous to um, Romania. And the rest of the vocabulary I think is fine as well. Just the pronunciation of the grandeur. So the grandeur is a French word, but we use it in English today to represent things that were very spectacular and very um, luxurious like this city in Romania. It has been replaced with something more interesting, a mix of Art Nouveau remnants, like the old villas that line broad avenues north of the city centre, elegant parks built around romantic lakes, and full-on replica of the Arc de Triomphe, and brutalist communist area apartment blocks. And then there's the Palace of Parliament, perhaps Europe's greatest monument to communist misrule and megalomania. Okay, so let's finish with that word. Megalomania, I think, is related to dictatorships when one person is the most important polit politician or leader. And I think megalomania, excuse the pronunciation, I think is related to that when there's a lot of hype and a lot of discussion about this one person and this person is centered to all the chat. Okay, so here is an important part, the full on. This is an interesting expression because we can say a person is full on. And this means the person is very intense and the person you require a lot of energy to deal with this person. This person's very full on. They are very intense. They are very hyper. They're very um, difficult to deal with because of the intensity. So the person is very full on. However, in this case, a full on replica means an absolutely completely replica, a complete replica. Okay. Abroad. Avenue really means a wide avenue. In the United States, of course, we have Broadway, and that's the very wide avenue where all the theatres and performers and performances are on Broadway. You can have broad shoulders, and this means wide shoulders. You can broaden, the verb to broaden your mind, and this means to open your mind and to widen your mind as well. So it's very, very important. Also, in a linker, we can say broadly speaking, and this means speaking in general or speaking very widely. So it is a very important and flexible word in English. A remnant is something that remains from the past. It's a more formal way to say the remains or something that is there from the past. So a remnant is things that continue to stay here today from the Art Nouveau period. Okay, and again, nothing really difficult here. And misrule, I suppose, is obviously the rule that was considered uh, incorrect or not good misrule. Okay, so it's probably obvious to understand the significance. Here it looks like the Parliament building in Bucharest. And for me, immediately I noticed the walls outside. So you have a lot of very uh, protective walls and obviously a very big building. Quite amazing, really. Um, it's the Palace of Parliament in Bucharest. Well, I'm glad to say the weather looks very similar to Ireland. So that's interesting to know. We're not the only people with that kind of weather. So there you go. So here we continue. Former dictator Nicolae uh, Ceausescu commissioned the 1000 room, nearly 4 million square foot folly in the 1980s. 
okay i want to analyze this sentence former means the previous or x former boyfriend former girlfriend former job former housemate the housemate that you had before not necessarily immediately before but in the past okay your former job your former position and the verb here is to commission it's very typical in politics if you commission something you give the permission for it to happen you uh, authorize this situation this policy or this uh, action to happen you commission okay here we see a very difficult measurement we have four million square foot that's very difficult to probably understand however a foot obviously is part of the body but also a foot is a measurement and in english we say squared foot when you have the two small two as the measurement in english that's squared so it's a typical measurement of an area square foot and it's singular square foot or square feet i would suggest sometimes people say square feet but the key word here is folly that's very very important and usually a folly is an object that was constructed that really has no importance in terms of use for example you are driving on the motorway and suddenly you see a big uh, construction a big monument sculpture and nobody can visit or it's just maybe considered like an a waste perhaps so this is the significance of a folly something that is maybe constructed architecturally beautiful uh, sculpture maybe but it has real no logic or it's a bit out of place and we use this expression to describe activity so it was it was folly i mean like a waste of time or something useless and it's a well-known advanced english word as well the heaviest building in the world and one of the largest it is a it is in fact a testament romanian engineering schools and materials in fact normally after testament we say a testament to it's a testament to you so probably it could be a mistake here because not uh, normally we say a testament to and that means a credit to so engineering schools deserve credit for this construction so here obviously we have heavy excuse me heavy is the adjective the comparative is heavier and the superlative adjective is the heaviest building the maximum the heaviest building in the world and one of the largest in fact okay um especially marble so marble is a type of material but in english we have an expression to lose your marbles marbles are the typical circular spherical stones or balls the very small crystal balls that you play in school you can play marbles and in english we have the expression to lose your marbles and this means to lose the direction for your life or to maybe become angry if you lose your marbles it's a very informal expression but it's very well known as well if you lose your marbles you become very angry and you become frustrated and you maybe lose the direction of your of your way so you lose your marbles marbles but marble is a stone or a material to build the hour long adjective so hour long two different words but the hyphen combines to make one word adjective guided another adjective tours that are offered take in just a fraction of the place this is a phrase alver very very important for example you take in information you absorb information you go to a lecture in university and you want to take in everything so when you travel to Bucharest, when you travel to romania you want to take in everything you want to see and visit and absorb everything that's number one the second significance is with accommodation if you take in a refugee or you take in a person who's escaping conflict you accommodate so that's literal physically take the person into your house so that's number one mentally for education and number two physically to accommodate in your house and that's the significance here but simply driving around the behemoth behemoth 
So a behemoth is an enormous structure. It's a very advanced word. The behemoth, I think, is the pronunciation. Some people might have different pronunciations, but it's something that's enormous or mega. Um, usually a building, but it could be maybe something else that's bigger as well. Tells you what you need to know. Okay, so we continue a little. He called it the house of the people, said my excellent guide, guide Alex Grigorescu, but it only caused the suffering of the people. Given that the construction displaced hundreds of families and consumed a lot of the country's financial resources. So here, the most difficult expression is given that. It's like because, um, really that means because, because, but it's a very advanced structure as a linker. I will go to the supermarket, given that we have no food. I will go to the supermarket because we have no food. Given that, given that, given that. Okay, very important. The verb to displace is to put people in a different position, to put people in a different location. So people are displaced because of conflict, because of famine. And in this situation, it's people needed to escape and to move to different locations because of the construction. Okay, good. Okay, next paragraph. Grigorescu, who is also a historian, translator, radio personality, and accomplished genealogist was just one of the reasons that I was grateful that my trip had been organized by beyond hmm sorry about that I don't know what happened we just lost the connection for a minute and I don't know why we lost connection so I hope you're still here and I hope we did not lose anybody so to fall in love is the expression that we typically say for a place and you fall in love with a person as well remember the past is irregular fall in love and the past is fell in love the key word here is despite despite all she had heard but remember the other way to say despite is in spite of so despite the problem has the same significance as in spite of the problem so that's very important in spite of has the same significance as despite here we have the past perfect had heard during her time as an emigrant so it's an as you know because the word sounds the beginning like a vowel okay okay let's continue to the next paragraph their approach is to show romania beyond the stereotypes and yes beyond dracula although they did take me to his fictional home in transylvania stay tuned and not to dwell on the dark chapters of history dracula the writer of Dracula, I think, was Bram Stoker. And Bram Stoker is from Dublin. In fact, he lives very close to this area. So Bram Stoker lived, I think, or maybe wrote, I don't know, but he, his house, I think, was close to in Dublin. Um, and it has a sign on the, on the house. So the writer of Dracula was from Dublin. Um, approach is very important. The verb is to approach. You can approach the airport, you can approach a person, you can approach a project. It's your movement towards something. So if you approach a person, you are moving towards that person with a positive attitude. And in this situation, it's your mentality or your, your attitude. Their approach, their mentality, their attitude is to show Romania beyond the stereotype and beyond Dracula. So everybody talks about Dracula, everybody talks about the stereotypes, but her attitude and mentality is to show more than this. Stay tuned is very important as well. It's very typical in the on the television. The verb is to tune. You can tune the radio when you set the frequency, you tune the radio. You can tune your guitar and the very famous expression is to stay tuned. This means to stay connected, stay watching the program, stay tuned, continue watching. So she is being creative here to tell you to continue reading because she will explain more later. The verb here is very advanced to dwell on, very important. First, the verb to dwell means to live or to stay. 
for instance, you are dwelling in Romania, you are dwelling in England, <coughs> you are dwelling in Italy, or you're dwelling in Bangkok, this means that you are staying in this place, maybe living in that place. So the significance to dwell means to stay. But in the same way, we use this verb for when your mentality, when you're thinking about something for a long time, you cannot move past the idea. You stay on the idea. So you dwell on the idea. It's a little negative because you cannot continue your life because you continue to think about this problem. So you're dwelling on, and that's exactly the context here. She did not want to dwell on the dark chapters of history. She didn't want to stay thinking about the dark times in history. And chapter is typical for a book. Chapter for a book and for the series on the television, we say an episode. Okay, let's continue. Grigorescu gave me one of my favorite examples. The first and only foreign edition of the New York Times book review was published in Romanian. A nod to the country's continued rich cultural and intellectual life. That paragraph is very, very clear. That sentence is very, very clear. There's one super important expression in that sentence. And the sentence is, the expression is, a nod to. That's the most important expression from that sentence. Everything I think is understandable, but the verb in English is to nod. To nod is to move your head. For example, if I nod, I move my head in agreement because I agree with you. I nod in agreement. Maybe I disagree and I nod in disagreement. So the nod is to move your head. It's also possible to nod off, phrasal verb, to nod off, and that means to fall asleep. For example, I'm giving the class and I nod off, I fall asleep. Okay, so the expression is a nod to, but we also have the verb to give the nod to. That's a very famous expression, to give the nod to somebody. And this means you give the person the signal to start. For example, just a little nod, little signal. And this means something can start. So in this situation, Oh, yeah, a nod is very important because it means to start, signal to start, and it also means a signal of respect. If you see somebody, you say hello, and you nod your head. And this is the context here of respect. So a nod to the country's continued rich cultural and intellectual life. So it's like a sign of respect, of recognition. If you nod your head, you move your head in recognition and respect. So that's really, really fluent, really important. And again, it's an easy paragraph with just one magic expression. And sometimes that's a very good way to write English. Okay, let's continue. Because in fact, Bucharest feels like a place where the ink hasn't quite dried on the history books. No place's history is fully written, of course, but here some dramatic change and upheaval was quite recent. Again, very, very important sentence. We have two super expressions to teach you. The first expression is the ink hasn't dried. This is a brilliant expression. So the ink is related to the pen and obviously the ink is wet. So when you write, the ink is wet. So you need to be careful not to touch the paper because you will smudge the ink. That's a very advanced verb, to smudge. So you need to wait time to allow, to permit the ink to dry. So in this case, the ink has not dried on the history book, so the history has just happened. It's very, very recent. Basically, it's another way to say that it was very recent, very, very recent. It's a brilliant expression. The ink hasn't dried on the history books. We continue. No place, okay, so again, the key word here is upheaval. And this is very important and very advanced as well. The verb is to heave. H-E-A-V-E -E is the verb to heave. It's typical in rugby. When you play rugby 
and we have the scrum. The scrum is when the group of people in rugby are pushing against each other with the shoulders and people typically shout heave, heave and that's like to push or to move very aggressively. Okay, so to heave is to push or to, um, yeah, to push aggressively. And in this situation, upheaval is a very famous expression, meaning that things have moved dramatically. They have changed dramatically. Everything is calm before, but now everything is up and movement. It's a dramatic, chaotic change. So for example, in recent times, there was maybe conflict, there was emigration, there was big problems, so people had to change their location, change their life. That is upheaval, big disruptances. And that is exactly the significance here. Really good quality word in English, the upheaval, the dramatic change and the dramatic um, chaotic change in people's lives for conflict, emigration, economics, whatever. You can still see the bullet scars on the buildings in what is now called Revolution Square, where in 1989, Sao Sescu was one of the last European communist directors to fall in a revolution that, won, that was one of the bloodiest. So a bullet scar is interesting because a scar is typically part of the body. If you cut or damage your body, you will have a scar after. This is the, so the sign or the place where you had the injury or the cut. So a bullet scar is interesting because it's describing the building. Normally we say bullet holes. In English we say a bullet hole for a building, but scar is more for a person. You can also have emotional scars. This is the pain that you had from something emotional. And it is a verb as well, to scar you. And that's a verb and a noun as well. So it's very important. Um, a dictator will fall, a government will fall, a um, country. So the po in politics, we typically say maybe the administration or the government will fall. And there's another verb as well, to overthrow. Throw, but to overthrow is to remove an administration. And one of the bloodiest. So bloody is the adjective. Comparative is bloodier, and then the superlative is the bloodiest. In Ireland, the word bloody is very common, informal. We say the bloody weather, and that means the terrible weather. The bloody traffic, that means the terrible traffic. The bloody noise, and that means the terrible noise. So bloody is very, very common in Ireland, informally, as is something different, like uh, terrible. Okay, and here you can see another picture of a church. So very small, but very nice as well. Okay, I hope that we are fine. And if you have any questions, you can ask your question in the chat, in the comment. But I'll continue again a little. And hopefully the connection will be fine. Because we disconnected suddenly for no reason. So I'm sorry about that. But hopefully we can continue now a little. But 30 years makes a world of difference. And the city feels optimistic now. The serious sounding memorial of rebirth in that revolution square is more commonly referred to as the potato on a skewer. Okay, this sentence is difficult for me. First, we have a very important common expression to make a world of difference. This means it will make an enormous difference. Very common in English, for example, I am tired, so maybe asleep and for one hour, a siesta will make a world of difference to me. I will be a completely new person after a little sleep. So we use this expression all the time in English to represent a massive help and a massive difference, a world of difference. Next, this expression I don't understand. The expression is a potato. The potato on a skewer. A skewer is the stick we use for chicken. When you have a chicken a shisha kebab or some type of kebab, you have a stick and you have chicken. You have pieces of chicken on the stick. That's called a skewer. And a potato on a skewer, I really don't understand the connection. Um, 
anyway you maybe understand better than me but in english a skewer is the stick that you typically have meat and you eat the meat from the stick there is a verb in english to skew and this means to change the direction so if you have statistics and you have a surprise addition a surprise statistic this surprise statistic will skew the results it will change completely the results so that's the significance of the verb to skew very difficult okay the irreverent description is not wrong historic hotels are being renovated and will open under flags like Corinthia and Marriott autograph collection the city has gained a reputation for a nightlife even if that has been subdued in these pandemic times excellent the verb is to renovate this means to decorate and to completely refurbish so we have a lot of words in english to describe the situation renovate reconstruct refurbish there are three commonly confused words so renovate i think is to change the structure completely refurbish i think is more the furniture so if you can understand the distinction renovation is maybe the structure of the building but refurbish is more the interior furniture that's my interpretation i could be wrong but i think that's the case here we see flags which is very strange because it's a hotel and a flag here is a synonym for a mark or a brand and that's really the significance like a brand of hotel the marriott or the corinthia so they are brands they're well-known marks or brands and next we have the verb to gain and typically to gain is like to win you gain respect you gain a reputation you gain um money but re you gain ground as in distance you if you're gaining ground you're making progress and um, you can gain weight when you're eating a lot or maybe you're something something else if you're gaining weight you're putting on weight so in this situation it's gaining a reputation like very similar to winning a reputation next the key word here is subdued the verb is to subdue and sub is below so you can see the word here subdued so the verb is to subdue and sub typically is below for example subway is below the ground subpar par is this level performance subpar performance this means below normal performance so the verb to subdue means to make the person feel the opposite of excited so if the person is very enthusiastic very excited and then if you subdue the person you make the person very 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 calm so the adjective subdued is very very calm and very quiet so for example this person is very subdued today he's very quiet or she is very quiet today and it's a really excellent quality english uh, vocabulary narrow okay so particularly along the narrow lanes of the old city and the lipscani district narrow is for a street you had the previous word you remember broad the broad avenue but in this situation we have the narrow lane it's the opposite if something's very narrow it's the opposite you can have a narrow mind and there's a phrasal verb if you have a choice of candidates a list of maybe 10 and finally you narrow down the list to two to reduce to narrow down so of course it's very important in english there's also a surprising cafe culture with spots all over town serving chemex pour over coffees and fancy cold brew very interesting here a spot is a location if you have bad skin and you have a spot it's like a little pimple on your face it's a spot if i'm drinking coffee or drinking tea like this and i spill the tea i have a spot on my t-shirt but also on the map the location you look at the map and you see a spot a spot is a place or a location it's also a verb to identify if you spot your friend you identify your friend and finally it's also possible to lend somebody money very informally 
if you spot your friend, first it's you identify, but the second significance is completely different, that you give money, you lend money to your friend. Can you spot me five euro, etc.? Can you lend me? But in this situation, it means location, a spot. With places, locations, spots all over town, serving Chemex pour over coffee. So Chemex it must be a type of a coffee, a brand of coffee maybe, I don't know. But the verb is to pour. So this is tea and I pour my tea and then I drink it. So to pour is very important because we use this for rain. We say it is pouring rain and this means it's raining very heavy. If you are emotional, you are pouring out your emotions. You are expressing your emotions to other people to pour out your heart. And then finally, fancy means very posh, very elegant, very rich, very attractive, very luxurious, fancy car, fancy wash, watch, fancy restaurant, very expensive, very elegant, very rich. But the word here is a brew and it's a verb to brew. To brew is typical for alcohol. The process to make alcohol is to brew alcohol. And we typically say a brewery. A brewery is the place where you create and brew alcohol. Also, we can say a storm is brewing. And that means a storm is forming because the process of brewing takes time. So the storm is brewing. And this means the storm is coming and forming. If you make tea, very informally, in English, we say tea is a brew because you need the tea and the tea bag to stay for a long time in the pot or the cup to get the flavor. So do you want a brew? This means do you want a cup of tea? So very, very important. Okay, we continue a little. And again, if you have a question, you can please put the question here in the chat. I hope that the I hope that the sound or sorry the quality is okay. Thank you, Borak, for your comments and hopefully everything is good. And um, thank you for your comments and your your questions. Okay, let's continue a little. And although Romanian still food tends to run towards stuffed cabbage with pork and beef, tripe soup and other meats, there's more and more variety. The new POT stories has an airy open design and a menu that leans toward international flavors and a good number of vegetarian dishes. So, um, tend is the tendency. To run towards means to um, move towards the, the trend, the tendency is to eat stuffed cabbage. Okay, stuffed means full of herbs, full of ingredients, stuffed cabbage. If you're full of food, you are stuffed as well, okay? And tripe is an interesting word in English. Normally we say it's bad quality. If something is tripe, in English we say it's very bad. This could be the origin of um, the word. So if the soup, if tripe soup could be the horrible soup, perhaps, um, that's maybe what people say because the word tripe in English often means really bad quality okay here the pot is a restaurant or a cafe airy is the adjective for a cafe having a lot of air and um, very spacious and then here again we see leans towards so the verb to lean is this action and if you lean on a person this means you need support from that person as well and toward is the direction you're going toward the city you're moving toward in the direction. Okay. And that's it. Okay. So I think that's sufficient really for today. We've seen a lot of vocabulary from the text. And I think we've a little bit more of the text. But let me finish just reading the article for you to understand. And I will do less explanation. So I will just continue reading until... The end. So the new POT stories, I think it's a cafe, has an airy open design and a menu that leans toward international flavors and a good number of vegetarian dishes. The Lakeside Casa de David 
has a menu of seafood, pasta and risottos with a clear Mediterranean accent and Le Bistro Frances, a Reles, uh, Chateau restaurant, occupies a beautiful 19th century villa and serves a modern French Romanian cuisine, I think Breton lobster with Transylvanian truffles to match. Other historical landmarks remain, especially the many beautiful Eastern Orthodox churches and small chapels around the city, such as Stavropolios Church, hidden away in busy Lipscani. The 1888 Romanian Athenaeum concert hall survived the upheavals of the 20th century and remains absolutely gorgeous inside. It's the residence of George Enescu Philharmonic, named for Romania's most important musician and home to an international music festival every two years. So that's the concert hall, which is pretty amazing. The Romanian Athenaeum Concert Hall. Across the street from the concert hall, the Athene Palace Hilton Bucharest recently completed a renovation of some of the guest rooms. The result is handsome and comfortable while staying true to the palace's history. It was designed by a French architect and built in 1914 and it has managed to stay open through everything that followed. From the elegant marble clad lobby, which saw its share of spies and counter spies, to the splendid Art Nouveau ballroom, to the very 2021 outdoor dining room, the hotels, fields, both historic and contemporary. And even though I was happy to be in a city that didn't particularly revolve around tourists like me, I was also grateful to be in a hotel that took very good care of us. Okay, very good. So that's an interesting article. Again, the topic is Romania and very interesting to learn a little about Bucharest. And I hope that you learned some vocabulary as well. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for paying attention to the lesson, for watching live and for watching recorded as well. I hope that you learned some things and um, that's it. So sorry for the disruption. Sorry for the disconnection. I hope that it did not bother you too much. And we'll continue today at three o'clock. I have a lesson dedicated to correcting writing. And that could be very interesting. I'm going to try and correct some writing from people who uh, are practicing English. And that's it. So my schedule is here for the next week. You can see on my Facebook page. And remember, if you want to support me, I need your support. If you can help me with um, some support, you can make a transfer by bank or you can um, subscribe with PayPal on my Facebook page and that would be a big support for me. I hope you can help me or think about that. Great, so thank you so much. I hope that you have a very good day. Any questions, you can put the questions here. Thank you, Borak, have a good day and um, I hope you're enjoying the classes and take care everybody and hopefully talk to you all soon. Thank you and have a good day, bye bye.